G'day guys, welcome back. Welcome to Pouring Your Heart Out. Now, I really, really hope you guys aren't getting sick of my fairy flowers. I'm having so much fun doing them. So I'm going to do another one. So this one, oh gosh, my all-time favourite that I did the other day. Trying again to get these gorgeous little petite puffy petals that I have been striving for for months. So going back to that recipe. Um, there's this one as well. I didn't video this one because I was doing a pour party with some of the girls <laughs> in my group. So didn't video that one, but I will because I love the colours. I will do a video on these same colours coming up. But today, today's video, um, I'm going back to the Montmartre inks for those people that don't have um, octopus fluids or Holbein. And these are relatively cost effective. Um, Violet by Montmartre, Teal by Montmartre, and Bright Green by Montmartre. Now these colours are totally, totally inspired by the lovely Nicole. Hi Nicole! <laughs> in, my, in my Facebook group. So she did those colours. Um, Gosh, I'm just trying to think what brand she used. I'll have to go and have a little look and see what brand she used. But because I've been doing a lot of Holbein and a lot of um, Octopus, I thought I'll, I'll go back to my Montmarts. Now, I'm using one of my little pre-made discs that I made. I've got a whole heap of them in different colours, different sizes. If they're too big, you can just trim them down. Easy to trim down with a pair of scissors, little clippers. So, yeah. If I've got leftover resin, I do that. It's a little bit on the big side, this one, but um, this is a bigger mold. This is the Rock Edge mold, my live Rock Edge mold. So that's five centimeters. That's four and a half. Just try and get it roughly in the center. Five. Five. I think that looks okay. <laughs> it looks. I think it's okay. So, again, with these, if you're using these, make sure that you're putting them flat side down, not the dome side down. If you put dome side down, then the resin can run underneath. All right, so flat side down. All righty. I have mixed up my Art Pro resin. I have decanted some for my white, my three colors, and we'll get started. So I am using the Cast and Craft. For this pour, um, it's got a lot of oil in it. So, you know when you get alcohol inks, they've got a lot of alcohol in them and only a little bit of colour. This is similar. It's got a lot of oil in it and only a little bit of colour. So it makes it quite a light kind of a paste. You can still use other pastes by all means. Um, I've used the Bloom. I've used the Just Resin, Titanium White. They all work. Um, really well you just have to use less white all right here we go it's gonna drop my white in one two three four five <laughs> I'm trying to get little ones six seven get in there <laughs> eight so I'm just doing eight um, with this little nozzle here some of the nozzles well the older nozzle that I used to have um, nothing came out of it I had to cut it right back but I think they've changed their their nozzle because of everyone's been complaining so they've changed their nozzle and it's much more user friendly now but look any white don't go out and buy a specific white any white will work um, it's just a matter of if you've got a heavier white use less drops um, you know you might only need four or six drops of a different white paste, but don't feel as if you have to go out and buy a new white paste. Any will work. Any acrylic inks will work. Um, any resin inks will work. Again, don't feel as if you have to go out and buy new things. Just don't use alcohol inks, okay? Resin inks and acrylic inks work beautifully. All right, so there we go. There's the white. It looks opaque there, but then when you tip it, you can see the, the stick. Is that a bit of... Oh, no, glitter's stuck on there. It's all right. It's old glitter. It's an old stick. All right, I'll try and reuse my sticks. All right, now I've got um, equal amounts for my colors here. I've got some left over here. That's going to be for my push. 
I'm going to add... Now, the thing with shaking them is you get bubbles in them, so make sure that you squeeze and so you don't get bubbles. Um, right, one, two, three. I'm going to try three. I'm going to put one in, in my... Oops, I've done it the wrong way. <laughs> oh, I wonder if I can get it out. Um, I wanted to do the purple in the last one, not the um, not the first push. I wanted to do purple in the last push because then I have purple around my disc. That was my that was my theory anyway. Let's just get this out. Let's get it out. It's coming out. Look, it's all right. It's all right. Crisis averted. Crisis averted. All right there we go. So that's got three. Let's try, I'll, I'll stir them up in a minute and see what they look like. One, two, three. I know with the green it really takes over a lot. Last time I used green, um, this was Montmartre inks, this green, it really takes over. So we'll see, we'll see what happens with that one. Might only do two. And then I'm just going to do a little bit in here. And what I like to do with this is just let a little bit fall onto my stick, shake it off, and then whatever's left on the stick is what's going in there. But it might not be enough. Just give that a quick stir up. Um, I had to put my other interference away. I'm going to use the interference green in this one. Okay, it's not quite, not quite enough. Let's just do one drop. One drop of the green and then I'm shaking my interference. That's not going to work. Interference green by Let's Resin. Don't use a mica powder um, because it's just too heavy. Get a really lightweight interference powder. You can hardly see it anyway. And you don't need a lot. Just a little... Little smidge there but yeah you wouldn't certainly wouldn't use that much if you were using a, a mica powder right so this is for my first push Gee, it's very pale isn't it it's very not as concentrated for sure as the um, Holbein so that's going to be for my first push I'll just put that aside all right let's get these colors mixed up and see what we're going to get so that was three, three, and two. Three, three, two. I'm just going to make a note of it, and then I know how much to add for next time. Okay, that's way, way too pale. Let's add another one. Oops. So that's three, three, and three. Now I'm using the Art Pro Resin by Resin Pro, and for my first lot of resin I did 100 grams of A and 66 grams of B and then for my second push which is my um, fresh push I'll, I'll mix up another fresh bit of resin just because it's thinner and it helps to really push everything out because by the time I'm, I finish dotting and everything the resin started you know it might be 20 minutes later and the resins really started to thicken up so um, we've all we all find that doing the um, the clear well not clear but the fresh push at the end because it's nice and thin and runny still it really pushes everything out and then back into the middle. So that's that's the plan. Happy with that teal. Um, Gosh, when I tip it there, it looks dark, but then on the stick, it's hardly anything. Hardly anything. Let's do one more. Only because I've got, I've got two shades of green here, and I don't want to lose the purple, so we'll do an extra one of the purple. So that's four purple. I've got about a quarter of a cup in there, I guess. Still really pale, but look, I want a really pale kind of a look. All right, I'm going to go with that. Four three three. Is that what I said? Four three three. <laughs> uh, okay. All right. Let's do that. Um, now the white 
still with me? You're all so quiet. I'm always worried that I um, maybe haven't pressed record or something because everyone's so quiet. All right. I think there's, um, I think Stacy's doing a video of this at the same time as me. Hi, Stacy. It's really good actually because um, sometimes we do the little chats where you video call each other and um, we, do, we do pouring at the same time, same colours, same mould, same resin, same everything. And then we compare the next day as to what we've all got. And it's so much fun. And I think there's a few of us doing this one today. Uh, same colours, same inks. I think we're all doing the same. Um, but Stacey and I are videoing, so we can't chat to the others at the moment. Um, but the, uh, the others, um, they're, they're still doing it. They're um, just not videoing. So I can't chat to them at the moment. All right, there's my white ready to go. Got my scissors. Okay, so now what I want to do is because I don't want green on green at the end, I'm going to pour my green puddle first. I'm going to do puddles. Um, actually, I might just go around that one. Oh, we're doing a puddle. We're doing a puddle. So the puddles, you get really pretty blended petals. Whereas if you do rings, they're more separate. Your colours are more separate for sure. So it just depends on what look you're going for. And because I'm doing puddles, the colours are going to mix and maybe get a little bit darker as well. So I didn't want to make my colours too dark. Right, so hopefully that'll go out to the edge. push that down I can see a couple of bubbles coming up from underneath it all right so then the next one is going to be the teal and we'll just pour that on top and that'll kind of push the green out towards the edge I think I've done it wrong <laughs> oh, I, <laughs> oh my gosh I'm trying to work out which colour I want in the centre and I wanted the green in the centre so that I could do the purple push but now I've done it opposite. Oh, never mind, never mind. No, I think this is right. I, mean, <laughs> I think it's right because I've got the green little disc that I've made. So I wanted the green disc with purple around it. I didn't want purple on purple. So there we go. I think that's it. That's it. That's it. I think I'm still right. <laughs> oh gosh, I'm a worry. Sometimes I worry myself. Can't even pour a puddle right. <laughs> I think I think we're good. Okay, now my white. Now this is going to take a while because I'm going to do small dots. It's going to take a while, so fast forward if you don't want to watch the dotting. Now I'm going to cut about oh, two millimetres of that, oh, maybe a little bit bigger. Can you see that? Hopefully you can see that. Let's try it. See how big the drops are. Yep, that's good. So. Oh, quick little torch, quick little torch. Don't burn your mould. Quick little torch. Just a tiny little torch. Don't use the big ones. Just use the lighters. Okay, so here we go. Um, basically, I'm just going to go first around just where my... Oh, I need to be holding this different because it's flat. One side's flat. <laughs> there we go around in my purple and I'm just letting the resin flow out keeping very light pressure just on the bag and just letting it flow out I find that's probably the, the easiest way rather than having to squeeze each little petal but it makes a difference like when your bag starts getting a little bit more empty you have to squeeze kind of each each drop So basically this is just, I shouldn't say just, but it's basically just a fairy flower with two rounds of petals. With the traditional fairy flower that we all learnt from Micah from ResinCourses.com, which I will link below for you, I'll link it every time for you. There's a coupon code there as well. 
actually it's been months since I actually did a traditional fairy flower but from memory it was just one layer of dots and then a push but what we've all started doing um, two rows well I, I do anyway two rows of of dots so what I do is I do one row of dots a push another row of dots mainly in the center um, and then another little push and then just leave it some people do three rows of of dots or uh, three layers of dots I, I I don't I just do the two that suits me it's too complicated if you add too many things in all right now I'm going to go around behind all of these kind of between each petal and do another layer another row I'm getting my layers and my rows mixed up just behind So you want to use half of your white now and you need half for later. So don't use it all now, okay? We're going, we need half later. Look how it's closed already. Look how it's closed. The shape of your mould is going to really dictate the sort of pattern that you get as well. I haven't used my live rock edge for a while. I can't remember how much resin it takes. I think it might actually take more than the Cascade mould. I can't remember. can't remember. All right, another layer. Row. Row, woman, row. Row, row, row your boat. So basically just a full, full mould. So doing these outside ones here uh, helping to push all those middle ones to the inside which is what we want so once I've done this nearly done nearly done bear with me once I've done this we'll do the push with by clear with a little bit of green in it like we've got here give it another stir give that push that in pushes everything out okay look at that it's closed up all right here we go I'm going to just scrape this because I don't know that I've made quite enough. It's a big mould, this one. Big mould. All right, there we go. Don't have to go crazy with scraping. That's enough. All righty. Now, second layer of dots. Now, this is where we need to come in from. You can kind of see here where there's no dots. And if you wanted to, well, I was going to say you could wait, but you don't really want to wait. You want to get your dots done before your resin starts warming up, before it starts curing, because then your dots aren't going to move. So you want to kind of use um, a medium viscosity. I think this Art Pro is medium. Um, it's similar to, if you're in Australia, um, Platinum's Super Clear. You can use a thinner resin like Platinum Ultra Clear, but you just need to wait a little bit for it to thicken up to get to the same consistency. Now with the second layer, it's important that you do lots, lots of dots in the middle. Because when you do that final little push, it's going to push all your dots out to the edge. Um, and you're going to kind of lose them, they break up a little bit. Um, and they just get thinner because you you know they've been diluted with more resin so you really need to do lots of dots in the middle so that they'll come in when you do your your second push hopefully that makes sense to you there's that little tiny bit of the purple that I had in my push okay so that's that now wind that up again so now what we're going to do is we're going to go around the outside of these that I've just done around the outside those colors are looking amazing I don't see any purple at all oh gosh this is why I'm doing a purple at the end now you want to use all this white that you've got in your little bag it's not a lot, but you need to use it all. Going again. 
around the outside of these whoops and then I need to go back into the middle and do more in the middle like I said earlier you need to do lots in the middle lots otherwise you won't have those nice puffy petals in the center now if you want more of a daisy look and I'll show you what I mean if you want a daisy look like this where you've got those long elongated petals in the middle then you suck more out at the end because that stretches well it stretches from there to there it stretches all those little petals out so if you want a daisy look um, grab your syringe probably suck out 20 or 30 mil at, after I like to wait probably about 15 minutes um, and then yeah you suck some out and that'll give you that long elongated sort of daisy looking petal um, if you don't want that if you want the small little puffy delicate petals then just maybe you suck a little bit out but not a lot that's what I that's what I've come to <laughs> realize anyway now basically just going in and using up all this white and really saturating the center don't worry if it's looking too too white um, that second push that we're going to do is going to push all of these apart to the outside so make sure you've got enough in here for them to come back again so I'm not going to go around the outside edge anymore so there's enough on the outside it's more important uh, to put these in the middle And you can see there's plenty of petals on the outside there all the way around the exterior plenty there you don't need any more so concentrate what's left in your white of your white around the center that just works for me my cascade flower basically a, a fairy flower <laughs> but just to differentiate between the fairy flower and and the the double row the double layer of fairy flower I'm calling it a cascade flower but yeah look it's just a fairy flower ah where else can I go wherever you can see some clear resin add some more you do sort of need to be aware of the time because you know the resin's going to get thicker especially if you're in a warm climate the more dots you can get in now um, the more little little petals you're going to have at the end depends what look you're after really if you want the elongated petals like I said do more do a suck after 15 minutes and if you just want the small petals which is what I'm going for today um, I may do a little bit of a, a suction at the, at the end with my syringe after waiting 15 minutes or so but we'll just see if it's closed in enough if you don't if you have your um, your last push transparent enough so that you can actually see what's going on I think that's a really good idea if, if it's too dark you can't see whether it's closed up or not so just that's something else to be aware of I feel as if I've got verbal diarrhea today but <laughs> it's taking me a long time to do the dots off I feel as if I need to keep talking to you so hopefully that's okay you can just fast forward me if you don't want to listen to me babbling 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 I think ah, sticking my finger in it. I think we're done now. I don't think I can get any more dots in. I think we are done. All right, that's it. Um, yep, that's it. So basically, just leave that for now. Um, grab a clean cup. Grab a clean stick. Mix up some more resin, and we're doing. 25 of A, 17 of B, okay? And then we're going to put some purple in it. See you in a minute. Right, oh, so that's what's looking like after my three minutes of stirring. And let's do... Um, I'm going to start with... I'm going to start with half a drop. 
because I'm just worried that it's going to be too strong. So we'll just put a drop on the toothpick. Some of it will fall off like that and then whatever's left on we can add in. Okay, it's not very strong at all. So let's do one drop. One drop. Yeah, the um, Montmartre, Montmartre inks definitely aren't as strong. Uh, concentrated. There we go. Look at that. One whole drop. Could not do that in a Holbein. Definitely could not do that with Holbein. It would just be so dark um, you wouldn't be able to see through it. So It's kind of good in a way that you're getting a more pastel -y, ethereal looking, not so dark. Yeah. Anyway, we'll see. We'll see what it looks like. Hopefully it'll be pretty. Okay. Now into the middle. Like so. And hopefully that will close up. I'm not going to scrape that. I think there's enough in there. Come off my stick. So as you can see, the top is closing over. But what's happening, and if you haven't done these fairy flowers before, I'll try and educate you. What's happening is the white is still floating across the top, so it looks as if it's closed, but it hasn't dropped yet. It's going to take maybe 15, 20 minutes to slowly, slowly work its way down through that resin. And that will de that'll depend on how thick your resin is. So what we need to do is um, we need to come back, set your timer. Oh my gosh, I just put that. <laughs> I just, anyway, it's the top. It should be fine. Just got my torch in it. Um, <laughs> what was I saying? Um, come back in about 15 minutes um, and hopefully those drops of white have dropped down. Righto, it's cured, it's hot, <laughs> I've just got out of the curing machine. Same old, same old, it's just what I do these, these days, all of them, unless I pour at night and then it can cure, cure over night. Now, if you look at this, you can see there's a distinct change in the design. There's this area around here which looks kind of different and then there's this section in here which is quite pale and there's like a definite ring there so I'm not sure I haven't used this mold for this particular pour yet so with this one we've got all the same petals all the way around but because it's got these little cascade areas on the sides um, you kind of get a different that that section there is different shaped Whereas this one doesn't doesn't have that. It's pretty much straight down. So that, that's got that on the side. So it'll be interesting to see whether or not we're getting two distinct patterns there. I'm, I'm anticipating we're going to get big petals there <laughs> and small petals there. So anyway, that's, that's my thoughts. And um, it's not looking very um, purple. Looking very light in the middle. <laughs> I hope it works, you guys. I hope it's pretty. Otherwise, I'm going to be disappointed. My colours were very transparent though. Oh, look at that, reminds me of a slice of an apple or a kiwi fruit. Maybe a kiwi fruit. <laughs> oh gosh. All right, here we go. Let's see what we've got. Oh, it's green. It's very green. Where did all my purple go? I told you green took over, didn't I? When I was putting out my colours, I said green takes over. Okay, it's very green. It does look like um, a bit of fruit. <laughs> so what I was saying before, before I flipped it over, we do have that two distinct petals. We've got this one here, those long petals, which the outside pretty much only had one layer of petal, uh, of drops, so they've kind of spread. The centre is where I went back and did the double a double layer of, of dots. So there you go. What do you think? It's very green. <laughs> All right, I'm going to have to do it again and try for some 
try it for some more purple. I don't know where all my purple went. It's kind of in there. But yeah, the same thing happened last time when I did, I used green. It, um, for some reason, it just takes over. Now you can see a little bit up here. See the little interference green there? Just gives it a slight shimmer without being overpowering. And it doesn't drop down and make everything like covered in metallic it just gives a little bit of a sheen to it so there you go let me know what you think of that one there's my teal <laughs> there's my teal on the edge so this is the rock edge teal edge lost all the purple a little bit in there but anyway it's still it's still pretty but yeah totally totally different to the last one go figure all right thank you so much for watching hope you've enjoyed the video and uh, i'll do another one again real soon all right thanks again bye for now